Apparently, Anthony Joshua has accepted all of Tyson Fury's terms for a fight on December 3rd. I say apparently because you know what it's like in boxing. A fight is never certain to happen until the two guys are actually in the ring. But with all that aside, he's accepted the terms because you may remember previously, Team AJ was saying that they wanted the fight on December 17th. Tyson Fury and his people were saying they wanted it either late November or December 3rd, and they weren't willing to budge. And it seems that AJ has conceded that. Also, something which isn't mentioned in this article is the purse split because Team AJ apparently wanted the 60 40 purse split, which in the first fight favors Tyson Fury, he gets the 60%, to be reversed in the rematch. Therefore, if AJ were to beat Fury in the first fight, he'd get 60% in the rematch and Fury 40%. It seemed as though Team Fury weren't willing to grant them that, that they wanted a 50 50 in the rematch. I'm not sure what's happened there. Perhaps AJ has conceded that as well. Now, you've got a bunch of people saying that AJ's been given a gift and thrown a lifeline by Tyson Fury in terms of offering him this fight. I see it very differently. I think that these people, such as Spencer Oliver, for example, saying AJ's been given a gift, I think these people are extremely short sighted. I'm much more in line with what Barry McGuigan said in this interview here. And I highly recommend this interview, by the way. If you haven't seen this interview of Barry McGuigan, you really need to watch it. It's on the Boxing King Media YouTube channel. The title of the video is Sack the Whole Goddamn Lot of Them. Barry McGuigan message for Anthony Joshua advises AJ to rest. And in this video, he says, basically, AJ needs to get rid of most of his training team other than Robert Garcia. He says that he shouldn't be hiring Garcia only to have him work through an intermediary because that's what it seems as though Robert Garcia was doing, that he had to go through Angel Fernandez and he couldn't communicate with AJ directly. No, he needs to be the number one. He needs to be the only one in the corner. Another guy can hold the spit bucket or whatever, but you know he needs to be the captain of the ship. I 100% agree with Barry McGuigan. And if it's not Robert Garcia, it needs to be somebody of a similar level of experience who, again, is going to be the number one. They're not going to be co-training alongside Angel Fernandez. No, 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 no. They're going to be the number one. So I agree with Barry McGuigan on that. He also says, as I've been saying for a long time now, that AJ needs to step down a couple levels and have some confidence builders and actually work on the things that he needs to work on, perfect certain techniques and strategies before stepping back up to fight at world level again. This is what Barry McGuigan says, because this is a tried and tested method. This is not something that I'm pulling out of the ether. Barry McGuigan, a former world champion, very experienced, you know, been a promoter and all sorts of other things, as well as a pundit. He's seen the same things that I've seen in terms of how you rehabilitate a fighter. He's seen the lack of confidence. He mentioned in this video that AJ's confidence hasn't been the same since the Ruiz fight. I mean, Nothing could be more obvious than that to me. And so how do you repair somebody's confidence? The last thing you want to do when their confidence is at an all-time low, like AJ's is right now, is throw them back in at the deep end. But that apparently is what AJ and his team are choosing to do, is jump right back in at the deep end. So where you've got the likes of Spencer Oliver saying this is a gift that Anthony Joshua has been given by Fury, and I've seen other people say the same thing, I beg to differ. I actually think this is a gift for Tyson Fury because here he's got AJ at his most vulnerable. Now, look, I'm not sitting here telling you that any version of Anthony Joshua would beat Tyson Fury necessarily. What I'm saying is the version of AJ right now doesn't have as much chance against Fury as a more confident version of AJ. An AJ who was coming off lots of wins and had been looking good, would have more chance than the version who's coming off back-to-back -back losses, who just had a mental breakdown in the ring, etc. So I think this is a gift for Fury because he's getting AJ when he's really vulnerable, when he's down mentally. And also it's a gift for Fury because up until this point, AJ would have always been the A-side or at the very least 50-50 with Fury. Fury's now getting AJ, and this is still going to be a huge fight. It's still possibly going to break 
British pay-per-view records. And now Fury is going to get a much larger chunk than he would have got previously. So in boxing, they say timing is everything, not just in the ring, but outside the ring. The timing for this fight is perfect for Tyson Fury. He's got AJ at the right time as a fighter because he's not 100% confident and he's got him at the right time from a financial perspective. So if this is a gift for anyone, from my money, you know, the way I look at it, it's a gift for Tyson Fury. The timing here is excellent for him. The timing for AJ, I mean, look, he's a big, strong man. He can, he's got power in both hands. He's always going to have a chance, but I, I feel like his chances would be much better under different circumstances. Let's say they built him back up and put him in there against Fury a year from now, 18 months from now. I feel like his chances would be better then. Uh, why are they choosing to go this road? Is AJ just doing it because he's emotional right now? I suspect so. I think that AJ's in his feelings. And when you're in your feelings, you don't always make rational decisions. You often don't make rational decisions when you're in your feelings. And why are AJ's team wanting to go for this? Ultimately, supposedly, ostensibly, AJ's the boss and he calls the shots in terms of who he fights. But you have heard Eddie Hearn come out and say that he would never allow AJ to do this or he'd never allow him to do that, which kind of contradicts what Eddie Hearn often says. AJ's the boss, he makes the decisions. So how can you then come out and say you wouldn't allow this and allow that if AJ's the boss and makes the decisions? You know, it's, again, contradictory from Eddie Hearn there. But either way, why, if Eddie Hearn has any power over AJ at all, is he allowing this fight to go ahead? Is it a cash out? Because three losses in a row, particularly if it's a bad loss against Fury, surely that's curtains for AJ. It's going to be much more difficult for him to rebuild if he has three losses in a row than two losses. I mean, two is bad enough. Three in a row? Imagine he gets stopped by Fury, which is a very real possibility. Then what then? So. With uh, Eddie Hearn, is it a situation where he just thinks styles make fights and AJ's got a style to beat Fury? Or actually, is it the opposite where he thinks, you know what, AJ's got no chance at all and I just need to cash him out now in the biggest fight possible? Because if I put him on a rehabilitation path where I put him in against you know, lesser opposition and gradually build him up to a title shot 12 to 18 months down the road, Who's to say that somebody else doesn't beat him? One of the guys that we're trying to use as stepping stones ends up knocking him out, and then we don't get to cash in on the Fury fight at all. You know, so maybe Eddie Hearn's thinking that. So he's thinking, okay, let's cash him out now with the Tyson Fury fight, or at least take this gamble. Because worst case scenario, Eddie Hearn's going to get the biggest pay, payday, even though AJ's only getting the 40%, he potentially is getting the biggest payday he's ever got out of him with this fight, especially if it takes place in, you know, Saudi Arabia or whatever, they're going to put up crazy money. So, and I know some of you guys are going to have a lot of reservations about the fight being in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they haven't confirmed where it's going to be yet. There is some talk that it could happen in the UK, but with the kind of money being thrown around over in Saudi, if they offer, if they come out and say, look, we want that fight, it's going to be difficult to turn down if it's like 50%, 60% more than what they could get in Britain. So anyway, that's my take on it. Give me your take in the comment section below. AJ apparently, apparently accepting all terms for a fight against Tyson Fury on December 3rd. How many of you think the fight goes ahead? We know Bob Arum doesn't think the fight goes ahead. There's a number of other people who have dismissed it and said, nah, it's all smoke and mirrors from one side or the other. Well, let's see whether it's smoke and mirrors. I think that AJ is sincere. I've always thought that AJ wants the fight. But as I said earlier, Ron, I think he's in his feelings. He wants to redeem himself. He's angry, you know? And I just don't think he's thinking straight. If he was thinking straight, he, and even if he isn't thinking straight, his team, if they were confident in him long term and if they understood how to build a fighter back long term, they'd be saying, look, now is not the time to take this fight. We need to build this guy's confidence back up. We need to sort certain technical issues out. But anyway, <laughs> that apparently isn't happening. So give me your take on it in the comment section below. If you're tired of the biased narratives and mass censorship on mainstream platforms, 
and you want to be part of a community of critical thinkers who love free speech just as much as you do, then come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide variety of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&As, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got an element group where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. Unlike Discord, it has full end-to-end encryption, it's decentralized, and it's 100% censorship free. You can also send voice notes as well as much larger audio and video files than you can on Discord. So come and sign up on Patreon. There's no contract, there's no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a cup of coffee. So I'll see you over there. I'm out.